Right, so you're going to tell me about this piece oh, of kit, yeah? Uh, uh, well, as best you can. Uh, right, okay, what, what we've got here is a uh, 105mm howitzer uh, motor gun carriage on a, I think, I think this one's the, this is an M, M3 half track, I think this one. Um, it didn't, we actually put this on ourselves, but it is similar to what they would have had, because normally you'd have the gun shield at the front. And what this would have been used for is uh, covering artillery for an assault. You wouldn't have found this vehicle right sitting up on the front line. Okay, so it's a rear artillery piece. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it, it, it's a mobile art, artillery piece. Uh, we, we wouldn't have gone vehicle on vehicle with this. The idea for us was to put in the covering fire. And then what we would do then is as the advance moved forward, we would pack up and then move along covering fire, moving along covering fire. What would the range be of this? Is it uh, how it's you say? Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, 105 uh, how it's uh, I'm not sure of the range off the top of my head because you've caught me on the Sunday yeah, cool. if you see the hole there we uh, pyros go up there in the hole this yeah. has all been sealed off just go in here and then we want to run the wire down into our connector um, this is all proper breach working and all that and um, because of that we can pretty much up to any size of pyro through here because we're using a real breech and a real gun and then what we do for effect is we have one of these shells here and this sits in here when the gun's fired one of the chaps will flick the shell back so you get the sound of the shell being fired so originally what would this part be would it be where the yeah that, that's where the that's shell where would come out yeah out. yeah because okay. you'd have a guy loading the shell in firing it opening the breech and then that would fly back out there another shell goes in open the breech so it's pretty simple isn't it yeah well it is a 105 howitzer that's been mounted onto a track vehicle so it is a mobile rather than sitting there being towed by a tractor unit this is a, its own mobile piece so may i ask you what got you into this sort of lifestyle uh, i was always interested in world war ii history from a young age yeah. my dad took me to a Duxford air show when I was about years old brought me a little Vietnam out outfit I was hooked from there on collecting joined the forces when I was 17 came out the forces in 93 92 93 yeah. and I missed the com the camaraderie I I knew this sort of thing existed but I never looked into it so I'd done done the same old thing googled it Realise that there's bunches of people that go around dressed as World War II <laughs> soldiers in fields Like me, you know, I was doing it at home And I've, I've, I've been doing this now for near on 30 years oh, That's a long time Yeah, it is it, Well, it, it, it becomes a way of life because all, you, like, all our spare time, we're down our farm working on the vehicles When you're not doing that, you're away at shows pretty much takes over everything. So this show is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this is, the big, this is probably one of the biggest shows in the South now. Uh, after the War and Peace had ended, this is one of the, oh, the biggest shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the biggest ones now. Um, you've got Capel and Overlord, which are in the South as well. They're getting very big now. Because of the vehicles that we've got, we tend to stick to the shows local to us, because obviously transporting yeah, the I tank. Mean, there's quite a few uh, wheels here. Yeah, well, well, every time we take the tank, someone's got to pay for a low loader that's normally the, the show okay. will pay towards you we've got our own transport for the half track our own truck for that but obviously we have to charge for the fuel and that of course thank yeah, you we, very much that's all time. right that's all thank right you. no worries at all my friend